Welcome to another edition of How to Build Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing. I'm Rod Cleef, and I'm thrilled you're here. And I know you're going to get tremendous value from the gentleman we're interviewing today. He's an Aussie, and uh, that means he's from Australia. Uh, his name is Kevin Dillon, and he's got over a thousand units at you know, close to a, uh, I guess, in excess of a $58 million portfolio. And we're going to dig into how he got there and, and I'm sure add tremendous value today. Kevin, welcome to the show, my friend. Yeah, thank you, Rod. And uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you. So, so let's start with, uh, as we usually do, with, with uh, having you describe really how you got from where you are to uh, where you were to where you are, you know? How did you start in this business? I think you started in Australia, didn't you? That's right. Yeah. So I guess the, uh, uh, the, the journey started about 13 or so years ago, you know? And, um, you know, uh, I think to paraphrase some movie, like, like, like all stories worth telling, it all really starts with a girl. So, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, so, in my case, I guess, uh, yeah, look, the, 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 that girl was, um, was uh, Daniela Coe. And um, look, so, so uh, she's my wife now, okay? So, so it all started. Um, let me see. I first met Daniela. So, I, I went to a, um, to a private all boys school uh, back in Australia, you know? And, um, you know, being an all boys school, when it came to our end of, uh, end of year uh, prom, I guess as you guys call it, you know, the, the senior year prom. prom. Yeah, prom. Yeah, you know? Right. They, uh, they wouldn't let two guys slow dance, so we basically had to import girls, okay? So we had to import girls, and it turns out that uh, my wife was actually uh, one of those imports, and so that's where I you know, first met my wife. It was actually my, my, my physics lab partner that, um, that actually uh, brought her, and um, yeah, you know, um, and that's where I first met my wife, you know? Uh, yeah, I know. The rest I, is history. Well, yeah. I mean, I, at first I had to honor the, uh, I had to honor the, uh, the bro code and kept my paws off because I knew my physics lab partner was, was, was interested in her. But um, yeah, look, she, she, uh, she, uh, I think she probably went to uh, uh, break his heart <laughs> a few hours you know, after prom. And so, yeah, look, I knew that was kind of my opening, you know? And so, uh, yeah, I, I guess as it were, um, uh, in, in, you know, in the months that followed, I, uh, I put in my LOI uh, with my wife and it was accepted. So, uh, on, yeah. on your first property, what size property? Sorry, I, I, I guess I, I, I'm speaking oh, metaphorically. My LOI. LOI. Oh, that, Danielle, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, so, uh, yeah. I'm a little slow. Let me drink a little more coffee. Wow. That, that, that no worries. Right. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I um, had, you know, um, you know uh, so, yeah, look, so, so, so my wife and I, we were, we were going out for about two, three years or so. And I um, mean, after two, three years of, of due diligence, I realized, you know, uh, she, she was the one. And so, um, yeah, I, I guess how, how the journey started, it was um, so uh, two or three years after, after prom, I, um, I, I took my wife's parents out for, for a meal one night just to, um, you know, uh, to, uh, to get their, I guess, their, their blessing on, on, on the union. In a way, maybe to, uh, maybe to, 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 get, to get the bank approval, if you, if you like it, on, for, for this deal, you know? <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah and so, um, uh, it was uh, Danielle's father, actually, you know, um, well, when I, when I, when I pop, you know, asked, you know, I like to ask your daughter's hand in marriage. You know, at first, uh, he sat back in his chair and stroked his chin and said, no, not going to happen. I'm like, oh, did geez. he really? <laughs> yeah, knock me back. And I was like, oh, uh, 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 why? And, and basically, well, I'm paraphrasing here. He's saying basically, basically you're a bum. You know, you, you have no, uh, you, you haven't finished college. You have no job and you have no house. You know, get those three things and, and maybe we'll consider it. And I was like, oh, geez. <laughs> and uh, the, really, the really awkward part was that we hadn't even, uh, we hadn't even uh, ordered food yet. So like, what do, you, what do you talk about after that? You know, I think we ended up, <laughs> This is, a true, this is a true story. True story. Yeah. You know, this wow. is some, 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 uh, some that's, Asian that's tech. That's painful. Wait. That's awkward. Holy Terrible. Cow. Terrible. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so anyway, look, um, uh, long story short, it took me a year, but I, um, I, I finished college. I, um, I got a job. See the, see, the problem is you went for an A asset class right out of the gate. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Really screwed up. Most people start with the D assets. <laughs> that's right. I worked their way up. <laughs> you, you, yeah, you, you shot for the moon. Yeah. Right. That's right. right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, so, yeah. No, it took me a year. And, um, you know, I, I uh, you know, finished college and uh, I, I got a job. And, um, I, and Daniel and I, we, we bought a, a little three bedroom, one bathroom house, uh, like, two hours like away in the outskirts of, of Melbourne. Mm. And um, yeah, the, the, the job was about a two, two and a half hour commute away from the house. So we decided to rent out that house and yeah, welcome to the world of property investing. That's, that was that 13 was years ago. Rent, that was, rented that house. Okay. That's right. Yeah. So, so that's did how you I, buy, did you buy more assets in Australia? Did you buy more yes. there? 
So multifamily as an asset class doesn't really exist in Australia. That's why I asked. Okay. Yeah, simply because of the financing. So, so a lot of so the, the Australian um, uh, financial industry is is very tightly regulated and therefore dominated by the big four banks, you know, Westpac, NAB, um, Commonwealth. Anyway. So, so it's dominated by these four banks, and so therefore they take a very uh, conservative approach to the market, and so therefore any new construction is basically based off the back of pre-sales, not end asset value. So meaning you gotta, you know, sell seventy percent of the building. It's gotta be condos. Co- gotta be condos, exactly, right. exactly. Right. You know? But yeah, so 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 we continue to uh, to, to invest there. Uh, we still have a a, um, a, a small single-family home portfolio back in Australia. Okay. Um, yeah, you know. So um, so you so you moved here. Where did you where did you land here domestically? So uh, we invest in the United States. In the domestic, yeah. So so we were investing um, in Australia for about you know uh, five six years. We we did okay because you know the Australian uh, oh, yeah, uh, the economy cra- it was crazy. crazy back then. Yeah, I remember. that's right. That's right. And 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 and, anyway, and still um still relatively you know crazy now. I mean the the, right. the median house price in Melbourne Australia is now just just north of nine hundred thousand dollars for the average average house, and for Sydney Australia it's one point one million. Wow. So anyway, wow. um, so, uh, you know, it was uh, just after the financial crisis, 2010, 2011. And, um, you know, it was a good buying opportunity here in the U.S. And uh, lo and behold, turns out I have a, a long lost uncle based in Boca Raton, Florida, that, um, you know, that was an investor himself, that was a, um, a broker as well. And so, um, yeah, I, I got in touch with him after not speaking for 20 years. And he was just, you know, um, this is my Uncle Willie. And he was a really, you know, generous um, open guy. So, yeah, definitely, you know, come over. I'll, I'll, you know, stay with me and I'll show you around and stuff. So, yeah, so we, we made landfall uh, in the U.S. In, uh, in Boca Raton, Florida, back in uh, late 2010, early 2011. Nice. Yeah. Great yeah. timing. Great timing. You know, I, uh, get yeah, so, yeah. I get so many guests on my show that started then that now have in excess of a thousand or two thousand mm. units. And the ti- that timing was impeccable. So, mm. where was your fir- where was your first multifamily asset purchase? Yeah, so we refinanced our entire portfolio uh, back in Australia, and um, so we so 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 we came here basically with. Uh, about nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash, you know, nice. and so I guess in terms of my mindset, um, you know, back at that time was I was thinking, you know, I'd I'd, I'd go buy you know fifteen or twenty uh, single family homes because that was, you know, uh, that was sure, that was the portfolio. Knew. That's all I knew. That's I all I knew. Totally relate to that, right? Yeah, you know, and so uh, after th- three four months of you know frantically searching and um, you know putting in bids for REOs and short sales and uh, you know and, and and all that drama you know back in the day. Right. Uh, we, we didn't have anything, you know, and um, it was getting kind of frustrating. And it was at that point that my uh, uncle suggested, you know, have you considered multifamily? And I said, mm. multifamily, what's, well, what's that? And so we you know, said, you know, it's basically you know, blocks of apartments and one, and one title. And um, Oh, yeah, because uh, you, you weren't even familiar with it because you didn't have it in Australia. It's, correct. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep. So it was actually my, uh, my, my uncle that, that, that suggested that. Hmm. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, I, I realized, you know, like, um, Three four months have gone by, and and we had to complete you know fifteen twenty transactions, and and so far nothing nothing was happening. You know, and this was going to take us the next I don't know two three years I guess to to to, to go through all our capital. But um, with my uncle's suggestion of multifamily, um, lo and behold, after two deals, we had used up all our capital. So um, yeah, so no. What's, what size what size deals did you start with? Let's. I mean, I'd like to get a little more granular. If sure, can. sure. So the first deal was a twenty seven uh, unit complex. Where? Uh, based out of in, in Homestead, Florida. Okay. Yeah, I know. And the second one was a 24 unit complex in Pompano Beach. Uh, okay, Florida. so you stayed in yeah. Florida. You got started in Florida. Okay. That's right. That's right. And, yeah. And used your own funds. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, did you at, at that point once you'd once you'd utilized all your own funds, what was what was your next step? Did you start getting partners, syndicate? How how did you move forward? Because I mean, obviously, you're you're you know. Working. Yeah. That's of a thousand yeah. units now. Yeah, yeah. So, so after that, I, um, I, we, 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 you know, refinanced some of our, uh, you know, our properties back in Australia to, to bring okay. more funds here. And about that time as well, some some investors in Australia heard about you know the, the work that we were doing here in the U.S. and the, you know, and the, the crazy returns we were getting, you know, we were getting here, you know, because uh, I, I guess at this stage I was, you know, um, you know, the, the, the cash and cash was you know, in excess of like, you know, 15, 20%, like thereabouts, right? Whereas right. in Australia, I mean, the, the average, uh, the average house there gets like a 3% gross yield. So, you know, so that's the we just cash flowing like crazy. So some, some, right. some Aussie investors approached me and said, Hey, um, you know, we would like to possibly pay some money with you. And, um, and that's how I, I also got into the syndication business. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
So what was uh, what was your first large deal, and where was it? Say, so that say was 100, 100 units or, or 80 units or somewhere in that range. Yeah, so, so that was uh, uh, 51 doors in okay. Lake Worth, Florida. Okay, so yeah. still in yeah. Florida. Because I know your assets are, I mean, you've got a presence in, in multiple states now. Mm. So Lake, yeah. uh, Lake Worth, okay. Mm-hmm. And, and um, d- have you primarily uh, brought in Australian investors for your deals? Is that how you've done this? Or? Well, I guess now the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the U.S. is now home for me, you know, and so I'm speaking to you from, from Houston, Texas, and, and now, you know. Oh, you're in Houston. Okay. I saw yeah. the 305 area code. I thought maybe you were still, that, I knew that's down uh, Dade Broward. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So we were there for a number of years. Um, but my, uh, my, my wife, uh, uh, Danielle and I, we, we're now blessed with, um, with, 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 with two uh, baby boys. Nice. And um, yeah, I couldn't exactly see myself raising boys in South Florida. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in, in Miami, yeah. Great, great place to be single, but not a place to raise a family. I, you know, yeah. Those, those live in Miami. I'll get hate mail for that comment, but <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, again, we, 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 we loved, um, you know, we loved Florida, loved Miami, loved Fort Lauderdale. Um, yeah, I, I guess just with, um, you know, uh, just with, with, with kids in the scene and all that, we just. Uh, oh, yeah. No, I, you know what? My, yeah. my, my experience of, of Miami, just to, just to try to uh, back mm-hmm. On that comment, mm-hmm. uh, it was I lived in South Beach for two years when I was single. You know, after <laughs> a long marriage, I was like an escaped convict, and yeah, and it's definitely not the place for children. But yeah, I'm sure there yeah. are beautiful parts of Miami where there, where you know it's a great place to. Yeah, and, and, and we were in uh, we were in Brickell, and um, again, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, you know, that's downtown. That's very. Urban. That's right. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah lovely, awesome, but awesome, fun place to. That's fun right. Place to live. So you're in Houston now, mm-hmm. uh, and I know you've got assets in Dallas, Fort Worth, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and even uh, uh, Waco, San Antonio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And other, other parts of mm-hmm. Texas. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So tell, tell me about, um, and as you evolved and got bigger, uh, I'm assuming you use third party management? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so in Florida, uh, you know, we, um, uh, at that time, we, um, uh, we were self-managing. So, so meaning, you know, I, I, I had a great property manager and, and she, she just looked after, you know, um, I guess all our assets and, and I, guess I owned the property management company and you know, you had a handyman right. that looked, you know, looking, you know. And so- Just like you did in a single family business, like, like we all do, you know. Yeah, you, you kind of yeah. Roll up your sleeves and handle it all. So you brought that mindset to your, to your That's right. investments here. Got That's it. right. You know? And dare I say, after, um, uh, for a number of years, actually, I kind of plateaued because- just the management of the portfolio took up all my creative energy. Right. Can you know? let me stop you for one mm-hmm. second, if you don't mind. I, sure. I, I'm notorious for this, but but mm-hmm. listen, guys, what he just said is critical. And I know, you know, many of you believe I'm, I'm a huge proponent for self-management and I am when you're not in acquisition mode. Okay. So, mm-hmm. so, you know, when, when, you know, you do not need to be dealing with toilets when there are deals to be had. So, you know, or until you have, enough of an infrastructure where you can hire someone if you're localized enough you can hire someone to manage your managers but beyond that it's just not it's too much brain damage mm. would, you, would you agree with me kevin 100 percent rod i, I okay. wish i i wish uh you had told me that five years ago you know it right. would have saved me a lot of um because because i, I guess i wasn't intentional about it i just kind of went along with the flow and um you know of looking after you know uh, of, of looking after the toilets and and and, and dealing with the uh, tenants and and me trying to learn Spanish and right. you know, me <laughs> collecting right. laundry coins, all, all that kind of stuff. I, I just, um, I, like, I, I, uh, I unintentionally got out of acquisitions mode, you know, like just mm-hmm. life just pulled me along that way. And I just didn't have the time to, 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 to look at other deals, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and, and I guess the tragic thing about it is that it was somewhat unintentional, you know, like I wasn't really. You know, it's so I, easy yeah. to get caught up working mm-hmm. in the business that, yeah. you, that you forget to work on the business. And, That's and, right and strategize and think strategically. And and Mm. trust me, we are all guilty of it. It's happened to me numerous times. Mm. So so let me ask you this. Now, you know, you've got, you've got uh, a a nice, uh, a solid uh, um, portfolio. What does your team look like now? Is it just, just you and your wife? Do you have some other people on board? Do you, do you have any sort of an asset management component or are you doing the asset management? You know, tell, tell us what that looks like. Yeah. Uh, so, so um, my my wife and I, I guess we consider ourselves primarily uh, syndicators and asset managers. So I guess we're we're general partners on on, on all the deals that that we mm-hmm. um, that we do. Okay. Uh, so, 
And I guess depending on the geography, I guess we got a separate team for that. Yeah, yeah. I know. Okay, a management so, team, or do you are you talking about other other management people? management and and just um and 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 um and general partners as well. Okay, okay. Yeah, so you, yeah. So, but, so whatever location you're in, you've got you've got a GP with boots on the ground there that basically lives there, or 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 certainly or well, has expertise in that. Yeah, you know, in, in that in that. Area. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's so right. um, so so I think um, you know, I mean um, uh, you know, a key to just life in general is just um, you know, whether it be marriage or whether it be you know, real estate or anything, you know, it's just effective partnering, you know, and mm-hmm. um, and, and I think uh, the key to effective partnering is 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 picking the best partners for a certain situation and the, um, the best partners aren't necessarily the, you know, the best in all situations. And, you know, sometimes I'm not the best partner for, 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 for my other, you know, partners, you know, so it's, it, it's really just, um, you know, what serves the asset the best, what serves the investor the best, and then we work accordingly. Right. Yeah. So, so, so the key is, is, you know, is effective partnering and, uh, and, and whether that be, you know, with, uh, you know, general partners or asset managers, or whether that be property managers, uh, whether that be, um, Dare I say even lenders or financiers, you know? Sure. No, it, you it, consider them it, partners for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it applies to all things, you know? So, so right. it is very much you know, ge- geography specific. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Now, I will tell you guys, those of you listening, uh, that, you know, when you're partnering um, in a general partnership, in more of an intimate type partnership than uh, a vendor partner, you know, it's like a marriage and mm-hmm. you, need to, you need to really look at your skill sets, uh, how, you know, uh, do they complement the other person's skill sets? And ideally, uh, you know, you, you, you play to your strengths and you find people that shore up your weaknesses. And, mm-hmm. and, and in your case, uh, Kevin, it would be geographic based or, or experts in your particular market areas, which is a fantastic pair up. But, mm-hmm. but again, you know, it's important to ask all the hard questions up front and, 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 and very clearly delineate what the expectations are and, and the what ifs uh, for all the different situations that can pop up. So there's just no surprises as you get into this. And, you know, I, I had a mastermind at my house uh, and a couple of the biggest hitters here, I had about a billion dollars in assets represented wow. here compound here in Florida. It's, and we're doing another one in August 2nd and Ve- August 2nd and 3rd in Vegas. But I, I had, you know, two of the largest uh, uh, participants uh, with thousands of units had have, were having partnership issues. They were breaking up partnerships, and so you know this mm. is a really big deal uh, that that you get it right, and and you and you take your time, and you trust your intuition. If your gut tells you something doesn't feel right, trust it, and and of course you know all the other pieces of the playing to your strengths. But but you know I love the fact that you you know you you consider your you know, vendor relationships, the, the finance, the partner, the property managers, uh, you know, those, you consider them partners because describing mm. that way, them that way, you know, it's a, it's a small thing, but it's a big thing. So. Mm. Yeah, no, well, definitely. Definitely. No. Yeah. Um, love yeah. It. yeah. Okay. So let me ask you this, Kevin. Um, you know, uh, I mean, you're not old by any stretch, but it, it, you know, if you were going to go back and tell that kid in Australia, when you were getting started, <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, it may be in your 18, 20 year old self. Um, what would you tell them? What would, what might you do differently? If anything, I, you know, that's a question I love to get the answer to. Hmm. You know, I, uh, I, I, I think I might've mentioned this too with some friends. So, okay, look, the, 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 the flippant answer would be so, so, so real estate has done well for my family and I, yeah. Like, you know, it, sure. it's done great, right. Um, I, I did, you know, so, so, and we both, we first came to America, uh, you know, I said, you know, back in 2010, 2011 with 950,000 cash. If I, um, if I had put that, all that money into Bitcoin back in January this year, I think I'd be worth like $13.2 billion. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, oh, look, again. Oh, God, I wish you hadn't said that. I'm going to have so many listeners thinking <laughs> they get rich in Bitcoin. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, look, I, 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 don't, I don't invest in Bitcoin or even um, equities uh, for, for, for right. that matter, you know. Um, but look, I mean, um, I, I, I guess the- By the, the lesson- way, guys, equities is the stock market. Stock market, yeah. That, that's the Australian- yeah word for that stuff. Term for it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but I, I guess, um, how do you say? As it, a, a big, a big, to, as it relates to real estate. Well, uh, well I kind of relate to this as well. Like, in a way, I've, I've, I've realized that my biggest cost is opportunity cost. So when, when it came to the, um, you know, to the, to the management of the portfolio, by spending all my time, you know, um, going to do evictions personally, you know, collecting, you know, quarters in, 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 right. in duffel bags, 
I was not, you know, focused on acquisitions. I wasn't focused on, on expanding the business. And that, you know, in hindsight was a massive, massive multi-million dollar cost, you know? Um, Right, Right, sure. Yeah. And and I think I'm just realizing more and more in life, I guess often it's not what we, it's, it's what we're not doing. That's our biggest cost. And I guess to be a lot more intentional with, uh, with what we are doing and really design. So, so I guess my, the, the, the advice to, um, uh, to, to, you know, to, to my, I guess, younger self is, um, is really consider what, what your options are and what are the opportunity cost of you doing what you're doing to the, uh, you know, to the, to the um, overall picture, overall yeah, picture I, of, of what I'm not doing. Yeah. And your success and your progress and mm. your ability to, 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 to ramp your business. No, I get it. And, mm. and guys, you know, I don't mow my lawn. You know, not because mm-hmm. I wouldn't enjoy it. I, I actually do enjoy it. But but what's the best use of your time? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we have virtual assistants in the Philippines right now that handle our mailing and we pay them $1.93 an hour full time. Mm-hmm. I have eight of them and, and they're thrilled to get it. And, and for them, it's a great 40 hour a week job. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, think about how you can leverage yourself to do the things you either don't like to do or frankly shouldn't do mm. so you can ramp yourself in this business. And, and so I'm really glad you brought that up, Kevin. So, yeah, yeah no, I, th- that's been a huge, huge lesson uh, uh, for myself. And I think, um, I think the blessing of having kids has really brought that into stark contrast as well, you know, in terms sure. of, um, you know, you time is limited. your time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know? And so, um, and look, and I think it's just, just the more, the more I live life, the more I see, yeah, opportunity cost really is, um, uh, something that we, um, have to you know focus on and um and, and i guess you know it comes down to choice really you know what how are we going to you know um uh w- w- like which relationships are we going to invest into in a way we're going to put our time our money so yeah it feeds yeah, the door and, 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 and and i'll tell you believe it or not it really um boils down to um being able to say no and, yes and, yes and that's that's one of the hardest mm-hmm. things and yes you know yep. as entrepreneurs we have that shiny penny syndrome we see mm-hmm. this oh that looks good let's try that and and we're we're all over the place and and and, you know, not only uh, are we less effective, but we've lost focus and focus is power. Focus, 100%. focus and clarity is power. Totally so agree. Let's, let's talk mm-hmm. about, um, you know, everybody thinks that this, you know, you've got a thousand units, $48 million uh, portfolio, um, unbelievable success. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about some of the stumbling blocks. Talk about some of the, you know, I call them seminars. I have had some big, big seminars. Talk, mm-hmm. talk about, you know, one or two of yours and what you learned as it relates to this multifamily business. Yeah. Uh, in, in terms of um, like uh, uh, war call stories. Them failures, but yeah. Like, Mistakes. I mean, you talked yeah. about the opportunity cost loss. Sure. You were focused on yep. toilets instead of acquisitions. Yep. But yep. but beyond that, uh, any 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 other? Hmm. Well, that probably that? Um, I'd say one of the uh, uh, biggest things um, was whenever. Uh, so as asset managers and as investors, the the biggest thing we bring to the table is um, is is capital and being well capitalized in right. order to to facilitate the stewardship of these assets because, you know, like, like, so essentially as, as, um, as property investors, what we are, are, um, uh, are stewards of, of these assets, you know, and, um, you know, and, 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 and gutters rust and, um, and pipes burst and, you know, and it's our job to, um, to, to fight entropy as right. it were. You know? sure. And so, and, and, and part of that is that, you know, we're not actually the ones, you know, going there with, with hammers and nails and, and, and trying to, you know, fix drywall, but it's, it's the capital that we bring to a transaction to, to really fix these things up. So, so I think that was, um, it brought in slight contrast to, um, so to the, um, uh, the first year I syndicated that 51 year deal. So some, some Aussie investors, you know, joined me and, and I, um, you know, and, and I, I had my own money into the transaction as well, but we raised, uh, just enough for the down payment, and um and closing costs and that's it oh no operating funds no capex no, no, no operating, operating funds no capex exactly exactly uh, you know okay and so um and, and so your thought was hey the property will cash flow and we'll use that money to do it exactly exactly yeah. guys, uh, guys don't ever 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 do that mm-hmm. okay just tell and and i'm sure you'll have a lesson as a result of that, <laughs> of that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you know? And so I said, I mean, like the, the biggest thing that, that we bring to the table is, is, is this capital. And so we didn't have capital initially to, um, you know, fix the toilets and, and, and sure. to, you know, and to, um, and, and to, uh, you know, uh, you know, increase the amenities of the property and to, you know, and, and to beautify it and everything, you know? And so, so consequently in order, the money that we needed for that was from the cash flow, like you say. And so therefore, um, in terms of our projections for the, um, the cash flow for our investors, we're just completely off. 
you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and, and not only that, I mean, the, um, you know, the, uh, the way we wanted to turn around the community took, took a lot longer than we yeah. initially anticipated, you know? That and so that was, right. yeah, yeah. So, so that was a huge lesson for us. I, I guess going into to future deals, just to be well capitalized and to raise money, not just for the down payment, not just for closing costs, but also for uh, CapEx. And, um, and, and also operating funds yeah. and operating funds. Exactly. Yeah, you know? we're, yeah. do, we're doing a deal right now in Dayton, Ohio, and we're raising you know, about 800,000 in CapEx. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an A asset, which is just fantastic because it, mm -hmm. it's got very low. Uh, uh, I mean, the rents of, of a $200 swing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, right out of the gate without any, any CapEx mm -hmm. being done to them. And, and we're, we're raising a, a few hundred thousand in, in operating mm -hmm. funds because, you know, you know, again, it's, it's common. It's, it's, obvious that we're going to have a pullback at some point and mm -hmm. you know you, you just you've got to keep you know go in with both eyes wide open and protect your investors money and uh, mm -hmm. so that was a lesson for you and, and believe me uh, i i've done it myself so i know exactly mm -hmm. i mean this is not <laughs> this is the pot calling the kettle on the, on this one uh, for sure cause yeah I, and, and I, th I think especially if, you, if we take a stewardship perspective of these assets i mean it's um we, we have to be well capitalized uh, right. in order to steward these assets, you know, to, to and protect our investors, protect yeah, our money exactly. and, and, mm -hmm. and, and be able to operate efficiently. It's, mm -hmm. you know, most businesses fail because of a lack of capital. Exactly. And, and this is, and that's what this is. This, this multifamily is a business. Um, mm -hmm. So, all right, well, thank you for sharing that and being on uh, open about mm -hmm. that. That's again, a, a, a very, and that's a, frankly, guys, you know, that's one of the most common mistakes made in this business. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see people that fail and, and get, you know, really have a problem, I will tell you, there's no, bigger issue than having to try to go to your investors to get more money. It's, it's, mm. it's a, a difficult, if not impossible thing to do and, and very mm. painful thing to even consider. So, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. Uh, and, and I have to say, I mean, um, it, it's, uh, th this business is amazing in the sense that, so that was, um, you know, at the time, one of my, the, one of my biggest traumas in, uh, in my property investing career. Sure. And it turns out that actually this, uh, this, the same very deal has actually turned out to be one of my greatest triumphs. <laughs> sure. sure. Yeah, you, you, know? you, you bought yeah. it at the right time. The, the timing saved you. That's you right. Know? And, that's and right. That, that's really it. And, mm. but you know, today mm. there are, there are, there are people that are doing what you did with assets mm. that that don't have the upside potential that that mm. yours that yours obviously did mm. um so no that's that's great mm. so so did you self educate in this business or did you uh did you are there any books that you enjoyed about this business or was it just yeah so my last full time job uh back in australia was actually as a um as a commercial property manager <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah so perfect, so so, perfect, so perfect. my my background um i, I guess vocationally, uh, was, was kind of in property management. So, um, you know, sure. um, oh, that's perfect framework. You know, yeah. I, get, I get asked all the time by my listeners, uh, you know, what should I, what business should I get into as a framework for, mm. uh, you know, this multifamily investing business and commercial, you know, property management. So it's certainly one of the mm. answers, you know, obviously mm. commercial brokerage as well. And, you know, mm. uh, maybe appraisal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think I got that from, uh, again, from a, a, a book probably everyone's familiar with, um, Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And, and I guess the, um, the idea of working to learn, not to earn, especially for, uh, you know, for when I was younger and, um, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You no, know, I, I get offers sometimes from people that are willing to work for free, you know, mm. just to earn this business. I always mm. admire it and try to add value to them if I can. Uh, cause mm. uh, that, that working to working to learn is, is a fantastic way to do, to, yeah. to, get, to get rolling, to get momentum. Mm. So, so what inspires you, Kevin, what, what, what motivates you <laughs> to, 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 to the success that you're obviously, ex, you know, enjoying? Yeah. Um, I'd say, look, uh, a, a big part of my life is, um, is, is my faith, you know? Um, and so I think, I think when we first came uh, to the, to the U S uh, again, that was completely outside my, my comfort zone. Sure. And so, um, you know, it was, it was, uh, June 2010, when we had a, um, a big family reunion in Orlando, Florida. And that was the, uh, that was the, the catalyst, you know, to, for me to, you know, to, to be here and, and to see the opportunity was here, but it was completely outside my, my, my comfort zone. And um, it was my father that actually suggested, why don't you come here and start investing here? And I was like, you know, like, um, Papa, I, I don't know anyone here. And it's, it's a completely new foreign country. I, I you know, I, um, but, but um, out of respect to my father, I, th I thought I'd seriously think and pray about it. And I thought and prayed about it. And, um, and five things actually kind of happened to uh, Daniel and myself that kind of confirmed, you know, this actually might be the will of the, uh, of, of the boss upstairs. Oh, <laughs> so, nice. um, yeah. So, so I, I, I guess, uh, you know, a, a, a big part of, um, 
my approach to life, uh, one of the themes I think is this idea of, um, of stewardship, of, of capital, of, of real estate, of, um, you know, of, of these of relationships, of, of these assets, really, you know. And so, um, look, uh, the idea of ownership is, is really a fallacy, you know, I mean, like all these, all, all the real estate that we have, you know, it's been here thousands of years before, before you and I were here, and it's going to be here thousands of years after you and I are gone. So our, our interaction with, with the land, with, with these buildings is really only for a very short, minute amount of time. And in that time, it's just, um, you know, it's just important that we, that we, you know, steward these assets and basically look after them for the next generation. So I think, uh, you know, that's kind of my perspective. Oh, I love that. I love yeah. that. I, I, you know, there's a, uh, one of the watch manufacturers has that, mm. has an ad that says the same thing. You know, you're, 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 you're wearing this watch for the next generation. Mm. I love the steward. I love the stewardship. Yeah. 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 Because I, I really do be, I mean, like, like, like ownership of, of any kind really is, is a, um, is a human's construct is a fallacy. It's just, you know what I mean? Like our, our, our life is just here and it's not, you know, so it's, love it. Yeah, love yeah. It, so, it, so, so, that, so that certainly, um, that certainly inspires me. Uh, the, the other thing is, um, is, is certainly um, the way it brings my family together. You know, like every day I, I, I sit next to my wife and I get to work with her. And um, I, when I was doing single family homes back in Australia, I, I um, you know, like, like most Asian families, we weren't necessarily that close. But then we would spend every weekend together, like swapping out floorboards, and renovating a house together as a family with, with my Oh, absolutely. Mom. And it's, it's yeah. actually fun, you know? It, exactly. It, it really yeah. is. Spe- I mean, if you love real estate, like, mm. like you and I obviously do, mm. it truly is fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's why I, I love how- It may not be the best use of your time, but it absolutely <laughs> is a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I've really enjoyed how real estate has brought my family together. Mm-hmm. So what, what word of advice would you have for my mm-hmm. listener that hasn't purchased their first multifamily property yet? What would you tell that person? You know, I, I have a lot of, lot, of, lot of people in their 20s and early 30s that mm-hmm. know they want to do this, that they know they need to get out of comfort, push through fear and take action. What advice would mm-hmm. you give them? Huh. This might be a bit flippant. <laughs> Okay. Right. Okay. But so, so looking back on it, um, some, so, so I think partnering effectively is, um, is one of the keys to life, you know, and, and stewarding those, um, those, mm-hmm. those um, partnerships is, is important. Okay. Yeah. You know, assets or people, it's, it's, it's important. Right. And I think the most important partnership you can really have is with your spouse, you know? And so looking back on it, I think one of the secrets to, you know, my, you know, a lot of success is um, the fact that I married young. <laughs> so, so I think um, just having a, a so I, I it's, say, found, it's foundational, Kevin. It's, I mean, it's foundational. foundational. It's foundational. You, you know, yeah. like, like you were busy doing at, buying assets when I was in South beach, you know, making an ass out of myself. So, you know, and, 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 and on the hunt and, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and I will tell you that, that foundation, mm-hmm. that, that, uh, that that security, that comfort, mm. That, mm. and that and it brings with it focus. Exactly, exactly. And, so and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I'd say I'd say uh, I mean, and, and look, and I think the foundational things are sometimes overlooked when we think about you know, you know cap rates and cash and cash returns and, and just the mechanics of of property management. But I guess the most important thing is often our business is a reflection of our own personal lives. It's, it's just a mirror, basically, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's important to have the um, our personal lives you know, squared away and, and stable. And a big part of that is, dare I say marriage, you know? And so, so, so four things I think that, that marriage did. So, you know, uh, I married at, at 24. Um, uh, I guess four things it, it did for me. So business can be very emotionally draining. And I think having a partner, you know, um, it, 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 it lowers the, the, the peaks, but it, at the same time, it flattens the crevices, you know? So, so, it's, so and, you know? And, and it magnifies emotion when something amazing happens. Exactly, exactly. Right. Yeah, so, 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 that's, so that's, that's one thing. And the second thing as well is that I think for a lot of uh, younger people, like if once you're uh, married, you know, I, I wouldn't have the option to necessarily go spend four months in Thailand partying, you know, like I had to, I had to, you know, it, it taught me responsibility, you know, which yeah. is, um, you know, one of the themes in life critical, as well. Critical yeah. for, for, for success in business. Right? Exactly. You know, and, um, and, and, and the, uh, the, the third thing uh, would be, it actually increased my bill, my, my borrowing capacity in that with two incomes, we could then take on more debt. So, so there's sure. an actual well, kind of a practical reason there. there. Exactly. Okay. No, right. exactly right, and and I'd say the look the um the the, the fourth thing is that it's um it's just back to that that inspiration. It's it's easier sometimes to do things for other people than for yourself. You know, like if you have to get out, you know, get out of bed in the morning and push yourself. If it's just us, 
you know, like it's, if ultimately it's for us, why would we do it? You know, um, it's, we it's will not do easy more for thing. others than we will exactly. ever do for ourselves. I mean, I will tell mm. you, and this mm. is so, I'm so really glad you said mm. that because mm. I will tell you, I do everything that I do mm. for my wife, mm. everything. I live exactly. to serve her. And again, exactly. I will tell you, when you're in a relationship, I don't want to digress too mm. far here, but when you're in a relationship where you live to serve the other person, that's a world-class relationship. Mm. And, and uh, you know, so, no, you, I love it. And, and I mm. did not expect that answer, and, and you've, but you've definitely <sighs> added value to that. Now, you know, I know there are a lot of young guys who are thinking, oh, no, you know what, I got to focus on being a success first and, and mm. making money first before I can go find my mate. But I will tell you that not to achieve – to, I'm not to achieve to be happy. Mm. You know, when you, when you use the framework that you just described, you're happily achieving. Mm. Yeah. And, mm. uh, you know, I think, I think that's, a, that's a distinction. Well, listen, my friend, you've added a ton of value today. I'm very grateful for you being on the show. It's been a lot of fun uh, and, and, and not, not the typical responses that we get on the show. <laughs> so so it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's been a treat. Uh, mm. and, I, and I look forward to getting to know you better. Well, thank you, Rod, for uh, having me on your show. And look, uh, you, you, you're, you're a real gentleman. And I, um, again, I thank you so much for having me on. Oh, thank you. It was, it was definitely a pleasure. We'll talk again soon. Thank you for listening to the Lifetime Cash Flow through Real Estate Investing Podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, please take a minute to visit iTunes and leave your comments. For more resources or to connect with us further, please visit our website at rodcleef.com. Tune in next week for our next show. Any investment opportunities mentioned on this podcast are limited to accredited investors. Any investments will only be made with proper disclosure and subscription documentation and subject to all applicable laws.